everyone and welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is episode 111 of my crochet, knitting, sewing, crafty podcast showing you the things I make. Um, you will find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk um, that's where you'll find the names of the patterns and the yarns that I talk about and any useful links and so on. Um, so if you have any questions, just pop over to the show notes and I'll pop the link for that down uh, below. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can just click the link to jump straight across. Um, you can also navigate this video using the video chapters. Again, if you're on YouTube, you can hover your mouse down here and the little chapters will come up. And I'll also have the timestamps listed in the down bar below. So you can just click on whichever section you would like to see. And the last thing I mention is that I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT. Um, that's where you'll find me mostly. And I'm elsewhere, I'm around the web, I'm known as Cherry Heart. So how are you? It's been forever. Um, I start every podcast like that now. Need to move on from the fact I don't podcast regularly. <laughs> Let's just all accept that and move on. Um, yeah, it's not been a great month in some ways because I think I mentioned last time about having a bit of a bad back. And actually, I think last time I spoke to you, it, I'd had a couple of days where it felt a little bit better and I thought it was on the mend. Um, but it turns out it wasn't and <laughs> it just went right downhill again. So, yeah, so I've been struggling a little bit with it, if I'm honest. Um, I've been to the physio. Um, I've been having regular appointments. So, yeah, hopefully progress will be made, but I'm not see. Well, I'm, I'm better in that I can walk around and I can sit and things, but um, in terms of actually getting stuff done, not a lot of progress. So, yeah, a little bit frustrated with it all at the moment, but say la vie. Um, but yes, anyway, that's part of the reason why I haven't been around because just sort of doing basic things like housework is, is a bit of a ginormous task now. Um, so that's sort of everything takes me so long, <laughs> if I can even do it at all. Um, yeah, so things have sort of fallen by the wayside. And then last week was half term. So I had planned to have a quieter October and do some decorating and sort of jobs around the house, but obviously... That wasn't remotely possible so I've sort of achieved nothing in my time my sort of time off um, but yeah last time last week was half term so that was quite nice um, and my husband was off as well so we had uh, we all had the week off together so it was quite nice to spend some time together but um, yeah I didn't get many of the things done that I wanted to get done it's a familiar thing isn't it they can't really do much at the moment just gets a bit frustrating doesn't it um but i can sit and craft so you know let's be thankful for that so let me show you i'm looking around seeing what i've got to show you what have i finished um well this let's talk about this first um so this is my whitmore sweater and um, but i've done a cropped version so i've got short sleeves on mine which i um, which isn't in the pattern, I don't think. There's a choice of either a sort of a longer tapered sleeve or a long bishop sleeve, isn't there? Um, and also I've cropped it at the waist a little bit as well. So I'll put in some footage of me prancing around in it a little so you can see what it looks like.
hopefully you've seen it in all its glory now. Um, yes, so let me just show you. I've got the pattern here. So that's what the sort of um, the proper version looks like, if you like. So it's the Whitmore sweater. There's also a cardigan version of it, and it's by Amy Loudon of Taylorist Studio. Um, so I've coveted this one for a while, but I saw um, Claire of Bird Street Yarn. She had this um, like cropped version, and it was made with double knit yarn. I think in the pattern it's two held together, like a fingering weight and a sort of fluffy lace weight or something held together. So it kind of um, what's the word equalizes out at. A double knit so I used a double knit for this and the yarn was by Biff Sugar and it's called Florence I believe I did keep one of the labels out so I could show you yeah Florence so it's a 75-25 superwash merino in DK weight and um, yes I got three skeins of that so how many? That's 246 yards to 100 metres. And this is what I have left over of my three skeins, just that tiny bit. So what I did was I um, cast on and knit to the end of the first skein. Then I cast knit to the end of the second skein, which brought me sort of down to here somewhere on the body and then I so I'd already split for the sleeves by that stage then I went up and just finished the sleeves which is just uh, just a little bit to finish the pattern and then literally a cuff I think I might have done like a, maybe a no I don't know I've pretty much finished the pattern and then done the cuff um, so maybe like a row or two of knit I was going to say and then I've done the cuffs um, so they're nice and short and then basically I just knit as far as I could until the yarn ran out. I think I might have left my bottom ribbing a little bit too short. I think I should, perhaps should have started that a bit sooner. I, was, I wasn't sure basically how much yarn. I should have like been weighing it and sort of paying more attention to sort of see how many rows I could get out of ribbing. And planned ahead a bit but I didn't so I just sort of went until the ball looked kind of smallish and then I started ribbing and then I thought mm, actually I probably could have done with a few more rows of that I think I've got a few more rows on the sleeve than I've got down here so I think it is gonna I haven't blocked this but I think it's gonna do that I think it's gonna fold up a little bit because it needed to be a bit bigger but um I could block it yet, like I said, I haven't even bothered to block it or anything yet, so it might be, it might not be quite so bad when it's blocked. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. This yarn is just so exquisite. And I think I was sort of saying um, last time that I was a bit worried about the pattern showing up because the yarn is, you know, it's not variegated, but it's a really sort of lovely mottled semi-solid colour so it's got a lot of different sort of um, tones of the colour in there which is what makes it so beautiful so I was a bit worried about the pattern sort of showing up but as the sort of little pattern repeats get bigger and they've increased I thought that it was starting to work quite nicely so again I could block it and sort of make it a little bit more obvious I suppose as well but I think it's okay I really like it actually I really love it so yes yeah, so that's that one do I only just finished that last week I would say so I've had it on the go for a little while but it wasn't because it was a slow project because it's knit up quite quickly really because you know I've only haven't got the sleeves really and it's lovely double knit yarn so it's been a quick project but I've just been spacing it out lots with other things which I'm just looking around to what to show you next. So I'm gonna do a couple of sewing things next. So just my, um, what's the word? Flower garden quilt blocks. So October came and I actually finished it in October. So we've got this half hexagon this month. 
Um, so this is by Alice Caroline. Um, she's got a website. Um, and this is the block of the month project for 2021. So obviously this one's long gone now, but she has started um, promoting next year's project, I noticed. So there will be a sort of a year long project for 2022. So if you like the look of this sort of thing, she's got another thing planned with Liberty Fabrics again for next year. So uh, yeah, so there's this one, which actually, I wasn't massively keen on this when I was making it, mostly because these triangles are quite dark. But when you sort of see it back as a whole, it's really pretty. So that's quite nice. This one's got quite dark in as well. Those squares are quite dark. I'm just wondering how much they're going to stand out as part of the whole quilt because there's quite a lot of pastel tones. There are some brighter ones and some dark ones, but quite a lot of it's pastel. Anyway, and this is the second hexagon. This one was a lot quicker to put together because it's got those lovely big hexes. This one was all tiny, tiny little pieces. <laughs> so I did this one first so I could feel like I'd sort of got the hard work done first and then I did this one which seemed to whip together really quickly after that. So yes, that one's really pretty. So they're all done. So just November and December to go. And I'm going to hold off until I've got them all before I decide exactly on my layout. So the pattern includes a layout. But I, I laid out everything I had so far on my bed the other day. And it's actually really, really big. It's like two metres by two metres. So I might just bring it in a little bit so it's two metres by something a little bit less. So I might just take sort of one row of hexagons out um, but that might allow me like I say some of them are lovely but they're so bright compared to the others so I might sort of pick and choose which ones go in even though it's kind of a shame to leave any out isn't it I don't know final decision to be made on that but I think that's what I might do just sort of to make it a bit easier to go over my bed and uh, sew together as well. I'm really scared about sewing it together. And then the other finished project, oh no, this is just another sewing project. I've got another finished project after this as well. So this was my sewing project for October and it took me pretty much all month to make them. <laughs> I did a little uh, vlog, a quiet moments vlog, um, which sort of featured me making these. And you could be forgiven for thinking I sort of whipped them up in one day because just because of the way the vlog fit together, you know, I sort of, I just added the little snippets together and yeah, it looks like I've made them in one day, but I didn't, I really didn't. So the original one I think was probably this one. I made one quite a few years ago. Um, I don't know why I just made one at the time, but I did for some reason, I made this pumpkin and um, I got it out of this year and my sister said, oh, you should make some more of these to go, because I've got some other fabric placemats, some sort of flowers. She said, you ought to make some more of these. For the, they can be like your autumn placemats. I was like, yes, I've always meant to do that and never got round to it. I will do it now. So I've made some more. So I've made some more in this stripey style. So I've got four in the stripey style like that and then I had some scraps and things of fabric that I thought this would be a good opportunity to use so I've made some in this sort of scrappier style as well where I've just sort of fit together different sizes depending on what I've got. That one, that one and that one and I've just put a little bit of um, a couple of little stitch details with uh, embroidery thread on them and also some quilted lines as well Where's that? yeah just some machine quilted lines as well just to sort of you know secure all the fusing well not the fusing the padding the wadding 
to the front. But yeah, I've been using those as uh, placements. Once they were finally finished, I thought I have to get them finished in October. I don't know why, but for Halloween, I suppose. I thought I have to have them done by the end of October for Halloween. We had um, my sister and her family here for Halloween and the girls went out trick or treating. Um, so yeah, I got them done in time for that. So I'm glad I finally got round to doing that, even though it took me forever to do it. And I kind of want some more. I've, so I've got Christmas ones, I've got pumpkins now, which are autumn, and I've got my kind of flowery, they're like Dresden plates, but I sort of scalloped off the edges so they're like flowers. Um, that can kind of see you through spring and summer, but I kind of feel like I want a, a January, wintery, January, February, March kind of set of placemats now, because everyone needs seasonal placemats, don't they? That's, that's your homewares essentials, that is. Right, so sewing projects we've talked about. Crochet project. <clears throat> so this was an impromptu little make. Um, so I had a hot water bottle cover, a crochet one, that I made years and years and years ago. I did blog about it at the time. Um, yeah, so it was a cream one and it had some little, I'd um, put some cross stitch flowers on the front of the crochet. Really cute, really love it. But it has started to get tatty over the years, so I've been looking and the sort of top bit's been getting a bit worse for wear as well. So I thought I'd get myself a new one and I shall make myself a new cover with it. Um, so yes, I just suddenly decided to do that. So this greyish looking yarn is one that I got when I went to America quite a few years ago now and uh, I went to Pearl S I didn't go to Pearl Soho because that's in New York isn't it but there's a warehouse sort of outlet in California which was where I went so we went to that place this was when I went out with lovely um, Claudia who's Crochet Luna who also has a lovely podcast. Hi Claudia if you're watching but yeah so she took me around all these different yarn places when I was out there and that's a fantastic day. So yes yeah, so this was from them it's an Aran weight or worsted weight I suppose I should say because it's American yarn. Great oatmeal and it's 100% finest alpaca and it's the softest loveliest thing and it was kind of like one of those barber pole ones that was like a white with a soft grey barber pole around it and it kind of you know it kind of looks grey when it's made up but I don't know if you can sort of see the slightly mottled effect so I thought I would use that because it's so soft and lovely and would be nice and squishy for my hot water bottle but I didn't think I would have enough I only got one skein and I didn't really think it through when I was there but I think it was expensive-ish and I wasn't really quite sure what to do with it so I thought I'll just get one but I think I probably should have got two because I might have had more <laughs> more uh, project opportunities I was just going to make some mitts but then I suddenly thought oh I've got you know I was going to do that hot water bottle I could use that for that anyway so I needed something else to go with it so I thought um I had this yarn left over this is a double knit yarn and this was my mum's yarn that um, I spoke about last year and I made a shawl about a shawl in and I had a couple of balls left over so I thought if I pair um, a DK weight with maybe a foreplay for play a foreplay that should get me to sort of roughly the same weight yarn so I looked in sash to see if I had I thought I must have something pink and lo and behold I had this gorgeous one and I thought that could work really well because one's slightly darker and one's pale it might kind of recreate that barber pole effect that sort of mottled effect of the yarn and I think it really does really well I think that worked out rather brilliantly if I do say so myself yeah so I haven't got a pattern for this I did just wing it I'll try and explain what I did so I did a chain from the sort of bottom of this curve so I made a chain just eyeballed it did what I thought and then I crocheted in the round so I did a crochet in every chain 
and I did four in the last chain and then I chained in the back loops to come all the way around the back and joined it together. So then I was working, I've just worked in the round and then the first few rows I did a few increases just to sort of get it to the right width. Then I worked up straight until I got to about here and then on the back I made a little opening try to just show you. So all I did when I got to this stage was I just chained. I did it on this row here. I joined the grey and I just chained, rejoined, carried on crochet round and then I just crocheted into the chain, sort of make this opening. And then I went back and crocheted into the back of the chain with the pink to sort of make a little flap coming down. And then I sewed these buttons on afterwards. So that's how I made the little gap there. And then again, the same here. I just literally eyeballed it with the shaping. I did some decreases. I try it on the hot water bottle, see how it was looking. Did some more decreases, tried it on again. Just went that way. So I kind of cinched it in at the waist. Probably a little bit too much, actually. It's quite hard to get the, the sort of top wide a bit through now. But I managed to get it through. And then just some more increases just to open it out again and then a very simple little shell top and I just thought I'd put this little threaded round I thought it's going to need because it's quite plain it's going to need a little something else so I just did a very simple just held all the yarns together and made a chain and then I just made these little balls on the end so these little balls again I haven't got a pattern for them but the closest thing is um, Attic24 has a, I think it's literally called Little Balls pattern on her website or Tiny Little Balls or something like that and it's either that pattern or as close as I could remember from, <laughs> without bothering to look it up. Um, I've used it for loads of different things so now I just sort of use it as a starting point if you see what I mean so I'm, I either like increase the number of stitches I go up to and the number of rounds I work or I reduce it slightly if I need a smaller one but that's the basic idea of it it's her pattern so that's um yeah and I just sort of modify it slightly if I need to but I think from memory this is just that pattern but just the uh, bigger yarn makes them a little bit bigger but I thought they were cute hanging on there so yeah that is that so that was a nice quick project I think that took me two days to make and then probably another week of faffing around and remember, oh I've actually got to do the tie and oh I've got to sew these on and oh I've got to find some buttons and sew them on. I always procrastinate ages about those little finishing things. But yeah really happy with that and these buttons were just in stash as well. Aren't they cute? Don't know if it's going to focus enough on those with enough light. Yeah just some nice vintage buttons that were given to me. And I had four and I thought they matched quite nicely. So yeah, that was a satisfying project. And now I've got my new hot water bottle just in time as well, because it started to turn quite cold this week. It started to get frost and yeah, it just feels a bit more chilly. So glad to have that done, ready to go. And now that's everything I finished. So now we're on to things I'm working on right now. So I'm going to go and show you progress on one you know about first. Let's bring it over. So it's my painted anemones blanket. This is my little work basket for it now. So all my uh, flower motifs that I've made, I've now put all the leaf edging on. And I've got my little half ones down in here as well. Uh, which you probably can't see and I've just got my uh, outer colour now ready to go because I'm joining all of my motifs together now and I'm loving it oh my goodness it's so pretty so as I said before I'm sure so if you remember from last time um, I went for quite an ordered colour pattern not very like me but the moment when I first thought of the idea, I was really taken with this idea of having them 
um, you know, striping down the blanket in this way. So I've stuck to that. I, that's what I wrote into. That's what I planned. That's what I wrote into the pattern. Um, so I've stuck to that. And I do really, really love it. But I must admit, there's a big part of me that really wants to revert back to my normal ways and sort of mix them all together in a lovely randomised fashion as well. But I need a picture to go on the front of the pattern. So the pattern is out, by the way. It's only on Ravelry at the moment because I want to update the pattern with the finished blanket picture. Um, because I've done, you know, a million and one samples to figure everything out and little mini, you know, a little mini blanket and everything. So everything's figured out, but I just did it in all oddments of yarn, so all really weird, odd colours. Because I, you know, didn't want to <laughs> use up my pretty, pretty coloured yarn um, for sampling. Yeah, so now I'm making the sort of the pretty version and I want a picture to put on the pattern. So yeah, so it's on Ravelry so that when I've got my pattern, I can just update the, no, when I've got my picture, I can update the pattern and it will just send you the update. But that's the only platform that does that. So I can't get it onto the other platforms until it is complete. Um, yes, so that is on Ravelry now, if you would like to, uh, join me and make some painted roses no painted anemones sorry um yeah but I just, like I say I really kind of want to mix these colors up and make a lovely random a random color selection as well so I don't know I don't know whether I ought to make another one I kind of want to make another one already because I'm I could have got further with this but I've kind, I'm kind of eking it out just because I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying seeing it come together and oh, I just love it. It's really nice as well. I haven't had this for a while where you have a vision for something you want to make. And once you've sort of got that idea, um, you know, to see it all the way through all the sampling and the pattern writing and everything. And then when it, it's done it's exactly that vision that you had at the beginning normally things sort of adapt or evolve you know or either by necessity or just by um you know as you work on things and see how they look you know perhaps they don't look quite how you imagined but this one was one that this is exactly what I wanted <laughs> and it's worked out just as I imagined so that's satisfying and pleasing um yeah so i kind of want to well there's two competing thoughts in my head as i make this partly is i want to make it bigger because this is kind of the middle size so it's kind of be a, a large-ish baby blanket size so i need to add it it's going to be longer um so i'm kind of tempted to add more on and make this one bigger or just to make another one, maybe in different a different yarn to get different colour selections and like mix up the flower colours. I might do that. I don't know. It depends. Once I've got this in and I've um yeah, got everything to a certain stage, I kinda wanna see if I've got enough yarn to squeeze some more motives out and see how far I could take that if I could. So that's why I haven't done I I've got the half motifs ready to go as well, but I haven't put any of the halves in the side or the filler hexagons along the top yet because, yeah, it might grow. We'll see, we'll see. So I've got the little fillers ready to go to square it all off nicely, ready for the border. Yeah, but I'm just so much enjoyment for this project and it's really brought back that sort of love of I don't know. I'm not saying that I've fallen out of love with crochet, but you know when you sort of lose your sort of a little bit of excitement just because, you know, I don't need blankets, I don't need this, I don't need things, I've made too many of them, so you sort of go, don't get so excited about, oh yeah, I can make that, it would be really lovely. But yeah, this has really brought back that love of just crocheting and making something pretty and wanting the pretty thing once you've finished it. So yes, that is that. That's enough talking about that one now. And then last of all, last but not least, try to look how long this has been so far. Okay, not too bad. Um, 
So this is a knitted thing that I've got to show you and I am making an emergency item. <laughs> a, uh, a request for a cardigan. So this is going to be a cardigan for my gorgeous niece. Hello darling if you're watching. Um, she does quite often watch. I don't know whether you well done if you made it this far through. I don't know if you normally watch to this far, but hello if you're stuck in there. I'm showing off your beautiful cardigan. Right, so uh, yes, yeah, so this is, she started a new school just this week um, after half term. And um, the new school has different colours. They have this sort of burgundy red colour. So we wanted a nice hand knit cardigan for her to wear. I think she's got some of the official you know, a couple of brought official ones, but she's always had hand-knit cardigans, either from my nan or my mum. So now I'm going to take up that mantle and I'm going to make her a hand-knit cardigan for school. Um, yeah, so obviously it's quite simple. I don't know if you can even see in this light, but it's just got some ribbon on the bottom. And this is the side, yeah. I'm, just, I'm doing the button band on at the same time, so I've got my little button holes which I can't even find to show you there you go there's one yeah so I'm doing my button bands on the button holes on the button band as I knit it as I go along and uh, so it's just ribbing I've carried on the ribbing up for the button band and it's just a uh, plain stocking stitch for that so it's going to be quite plain and simple and I'm using um Starcraft Special DK and this is in their burgundy colour. I'm not sure of the number but it's just called burgundy. So what I did is I got out my swatches. So I've got swatches for the special DK colours and the Bellissima and Bambino colours. So we picked out sort of the reds that were closest um, that we thought would be closest to the school colours and then we kind of matched them up and uh, she said this one would be the best match for her school, new school colours. So that's what we went for. And um, yeah, so that's knitting up really nicely. Getting quite a nice, well, I feel like it just looks like a complete blob and you can't see any detail. Oh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> There's the stitches. But yeah, it's knit knitting up quite nice and neat and regularly. Uh, yeah, so happy with how that's looking. And then pattern wise, um, we wanted to braid my mum's pattern store. Um, so I've got a few of her old ones, but I don't think, when I started this, we couldn't find all of them. We found the others now. But um, yeah, so I'm going by, because I wanted to get the sizing, because I've made adult. And I have made little children, but I haven't sort of made her age range, so I just wanted to get a better idea of sizing. So we're not quite sure what pattern Mum followed last time, but I've gone for one out of this book um, because it seemed to go up to, well, almost the right sizing. I think it's going to be right. We're kind of winging it a little bit here, if I'm honest with you. So I'm basing it on a pattern, but I'm not actually... Sort of following the stitch patterns and so on. I'm just using the numbers if you see what I mean. So I'll try and show it to you. So the pattern is actually this one here. As you see, it's got a little person wearing it and it's got this kind of little feather and fanish style edging. Um, but it was got a v-neck which she wanted and it goes up to the size that, we, that I'm hoping should fit. Um, I'm thinking what I've got here it might even come up a little bit big even though the size is for a little bit smaller than her. I know it's confusing isn't it? I was confused anyway. Yeah so anyway I'm basing it on those numbers um, and we'll just have to see how it goes basically. <laughs> um, yeah but it's, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of using a pattern, I'm kind of not using a pattern. I'm just, it's fine while we're on the nice straight bottom bit. I'm just hoping I can keep working out what I need to do in the right way when it gets to the top. Because that's the other thing, I don't think I've knit 
I'm not sure I've knit any cardigans from the top up, certainly not without following a pattern exactly. I'm a, I think I'd be a bit more confident if I was going from the top down because I'm more used to that sort of you expand out, then you take the sleeve stitches off and then it you know then you have less and you go straight down this one I'm not quite sure how you, you know you come up to here and then you've got to add more stitches in and like do you knit the sleeves and then yeah I'm not quite sure how that's working in my mind <laughs> reading ahead I think you it seems like you sort of you knit up to under the arm and then you sort of knit this bit and maybe this bit all sort of separate and knit the back bit separate and then knit the sleeve separate and then sew it all together which kind of doesn't make a lot of sense in a way I sort of feel like yeah but if you had those bits you could just rather than knit them up and then sew them together couldn't you somehow just make it into a round and knit it surely that'd be easier so I might keep sort of plotting and see if I can figure that out how to do that or I might just you know kind of give up and just follow the pattern for safety so we'll see how that goes um yes but that's it i think no incoming goodies so i haven't brought anything lovely and yarn related or crafty related to show you um so there is no section for that um there is no patterns in progress either obviously this one i talked about um and that's all that's been going on lately. I've kind of just taken a little bit of a step back and a little bit of break for it, which I was planning to do at the end of this year, like I say, for try fitting some house things and decorating things. Um, but yeah, not sure if that's happening. And Vlogmas as well. Vlogmas, I'm not sure about either. Um, yeah, I've had people asking me about it and I, I had fully intended to do another Vlogmas this year even though I was a bit not sure what to do but my daughter is quite keen on the idea she was talking about it the other day and I was a bit like oh do you know what I'm not sure if I'm going to do it this year because I've shown everyone literally everything there is to show in every conceivable way I can think of of showing it you know I don't know how to show the same things again and sort of make it fresh or interesting and and she was a bit like, oh, but what? <laughs> so we were looking through, like last year's ones. She wanted to watch them again, so we were watching some of them. And it's made me really want to do some more, but at the same time it's also made me think, oh, how on earth could I sort of show that same thing again? I can't think of another way. You know, like we... Christmas you have traditions you do the same things again and again don't you and that's part of what we love about it isn't it it's certainly part of what my daughter enjoys about it oh I like the bit when we do this and I like when we get this out and you know and I'm the same um but yeah when it comes to showing you guys I just feel like it's getting very repetitive so I don't know really I don't know what to say about that what do you guys think do you just watch would you just watch it if it was just the same things I don't know I guess I watch other people's vlogmases and I don't think about it in that way you know I don't think oh shit, I got those decorations out last year or I saw that Christmas cup the year before I don't know so maybe it doesn't matter I don't know we'll see we'll see how things go see how the blessed back is by then and see what's possible I suppose but anyway that's more than enough chatter from me so I will leave you now I will let you get on with your days uh, or evenings or whatever it is and I will see you next time I hope you find some lovely crafty moments between now and then and I'll speak to you soon